Welcome back to Coding Shorts. My name is Sean Wildermuth. In these videos, I attempt to teach some small bit of programming, specifically usually web programming or C-sharp programming or .NET. I want them to be short and concise, nothing as long as a course or even a talk at a user group. I want to be able to teach you something in your spare time. If this is your first time, or you've been a long time watcher without subscribing, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button and click the bell for alerts. It really, really does help. We've gone from just a couple of hundred followers to over 2,000 now, so I'm really excited, but the more the merrier. In this week's episode, I'm gonna be talking about Vue 3.2's new feature of creating custom elements. This feature is going to allow you to package up a Vue component to be used directly on a website where you just have to include the JavaScript package and just use the custom element. And I can imagine some great use cases here. We might want to create a reusable component that you use inside your CRM, or you want to package them up for end users to use without having to know or understand or know how to build Vue. It's another tool in the tool chest for us to build reusable pieces for other web developers. Let me show you how it works. Hi, I want to show you a new feature of Vue 3.2 called Custom Elements. Let's take a look. So I have this beginning project, and it's a simple app that has sort of a chat window, just a simple UI that allows someone to type a message in, and it shows up in this message. It's pretty simple. A couple pieces of state, the new message we're looking at, and the message list, and then a couple of functions here to add the new message and clear the value, as well as to just check to see if they hit enter, and if so, add the message. Not rocket science, a pretty simple component. And like any simple view project, I'm just creating that chat window and then mounting it as an app. And in the browser, it's pretty simple. So if I say hello, goodbye, just shows it and would work and it should grow as we go, right? Nothing really amazing about this, but you can see it's sort of the start of something simple. Back in the code here, I wanna change this. I wanna use custom elements instead. So let's erase this whole main and instead, let's go ahead and erase the create app piece. And I'm gonna actually rename this to chat because what I wanna do is I wanna create an element by calling a view 3.2 feature called define custom element. And this is gonna take our chat object and return this custom element. And let's see if we can just pull it out of view. Again, this is a view function. And once we have that custom element, a wrapper around our component for something we can attach to the browser, we then have to go to the DOM and look at custom elements and we need to define it. We're gonna give it a name and I'm gonna call it chat window. Now this dash in the middle is important. And it's important because all custom elements have to have a dash in them. And I think that's a security measure to make it clear that you don't have an element that is overriding a default element, the password input or something like that. And then here we're gonna pass in our element. So we're telling the DOM, hey, if you see an object like this, use our wrapped element to actually run it. And so over in our HTML page, we're gonna leave this. This is still gonna load. Vite will actually still work with it fine. But instead of having a app div, I'm gonna do chat window, right? This is the name we gave it over here in main, chat window. If we now go over, we can see that it worked. This is a functional web component. I can say hello. Goodbye. And so we can use these on our page, but you might notice it looks a little weird. If we look at the component again, you'll note that we have this style section. And because components can't just reference or build these CSS, you have to have a way of taking these styles that are inside the component. This isn't necessary if you don't want styles inside the component, if you just wanted them globally or something. And we need to stringify them so that they're emitted. And the short way to do that is actually to just call your file.ce instead. This means a custom element. And let's make sure the main changed the name, it did. And with that change, 
we can see our styling came back. And so that was just a little change to allow us to do that. Still works, right, the same way. Now you might think, why not just leave your spa as a mounted element? Well, that does make a lot of sense. But what we're really talking about is having the ability to have an element, maybe uh, package this up as just a simple JavaScript, which I'm not going to get to show you in this coding short, but does work where someone could just bring in the JavaScript and then support these without having to think or know that they're view at all. So let's take this and I'm going to create a uh, couple of copies of it to show that each instance of this is going to work on its own. Here we can see our first and our second. And if we say hello, goodbye. I don't know why I keep wanting to type goodbye when I evidently cannot type it. And bar flux, right? They're working independently. They're just their own instances of it. But in fact, they aren't really. There's a single view runtime that's running both of them, which means that they could communicate between them. So how would we make that happen? Let's come over to our chat window. And let's create a new, let's say, store.js. Now, I'm not going to create a UX or anything. I'm just going to create a really, really simple store. So export default object. And I'm saying default object so that we get the same instance, right? If this were a factory, we wouldn't get the same instance. And you can sort of control that. But this is a shared instance. Anyone that imports this will get the same object back. And so I'll call this messages. And I'll do what we did before, which is... Put a reactive wrapper around an array. And we'll need to bring in reactive. So though that's our complicated store. But over in our component, let's take this messages and let's not use it at all. Instead, we're going to import our store from store. We're getting a bunch of weirdness here. Not sure why, but you got to love the way this works. So in this case, messages doesn't exist, but store.messages super does. And in that same way, our messages object here could just be store.messages, right? In this case, we're talking about using a shared object. And in an individual view instance, this would be easy, right? You would have a shared instance. You could share it between different components. That's great. But this extends to the way that this works. Let's come back over here. We now have two. And when I say foo here, you notice because these are both using that shared instance, we're getting the same object. So whether we add it in one or we add it in another, they can actually get at these shared pieces of data because they're only using a single instance of you across them. There are some ways that you can defeat that if that's what you want, but this does allow you to have smaller components that might actually want to work together. And I like this because the simplicity of using, you know, this idea of a chat window means that I could create something that might be useful in a CMS and then have as people type, just say, go ahead and create this element here and you'll get that thing you want. And in that same idea, if we come over to our view here. I'm just going to change this to be, let's just say color. So we'll go ahead and bind to style equals color colon color if it likes that okay and we can see nothing's really changed here we have the same but if we go over to index let's add that attribute here let's say purple and here we'll say color equals and let's say just gray right here we can see we're getting that purple and gray assigning there and even the text in there. Obviously, this isn't going to necessarily going to affect both. But in this way, we can pass arguments back. And though I'm not going to do it in this demo, we could do the same thing with events as well. So these are still first class HTML objects, but also view components. And they're both really mapped to each other in a really pretty terrific way. A lot more you can see and read about this, but I hope this has given you a taste of using web components and exactly how they look. At the bottom of the screen now, I'll put a little link to an awful, awful version of this called a Make It Blink. It's a component that brings back the Blink tag in a really awful way. 
but there you'll be able to see the entire thing, including a build process of how to get a JavaScript file that you can just include on any page without needing to think about Vue itself. My name is Sean Wildermuth. Thanks for joining me in this weird little world of custom elements in Vue. See you next time in Coding Shorts. And remember, liking and subscribing really helps. Thanks again.